In this section, we'll look at the basic operations involved in using a chainsaw. We'll start with fueling up. Most chainsaws run on unleaded petrol mixed with two-stroke oil, often at a 25 to 1 ratio. But make sure you check with the operator's manual if you're not sure what the fuel-oil ratio for your saw is. The normal precautions for handling petrol apply to chainsaw use. Never smoke or let anyone else smoke nearby while you're filling up the saw. Always stop the engine before you refuel. And make sure you move away from the refueling area before you start up the saw, preferably at least three metres away. Remember too that fuel doesn't keep forever. Once it's more than three months old, the fuel can deteriorate and make the motor play up. So it's best to only store fuel in small quantities and replace it regularly. Dirty fuel can also play havoc with your saw. So you should keep the cap on the container when you're not using it and make sure the area around the fuel tank inlet on the saw is clean before you take the cap off to fill up. Every time you fill up with fuel, you should also top up the bar oil reservoir. This reservoir is designed to run out at about the same rate as the fuel tank, which is why you need to fill both at the same time. There are two ways of starting a chainsaw, the cold start and the warm start. Let's have a look at how a cold start is done first. Okay, we're now ready to start the saw. Make sure that the area that you are going to start in is clear of debris. We'll put our earmuffs on, put our visor down, chain brake, decompression button, choke, out, on off switch on. That has fired, decompression button in, Choke in. We also still need to check the chain tension, so we'll take the chain brake off, roll the saw back, and just check your chain tension to ensure that it is still taut. Let's now go through the steps again, one by one. Put the saw on level ground, making sure that the chain isn't touching anything. Put the chain brake on. This will ensure that the chain doesn't spin unexpectedly. Push the decompression button in. This could be on either side of the saw. Its purpose is to reduce the pressure inside the motor while you're pulling the cord. Pull the choke out and check that the on-off switch is on. Put your right foot through the rear handle and your left hand on the front handle and pull the starter cord with your right hand. When you hear the saw fire, reset the decompression button, put the choke in and pull the starter cord again until the saw starts up and runs. Once the saw is running, disengage the throttle trigger so that the saw runs at idle and then disengage the chain brake and let the saw warm up at half throttle. You can check that the bar oil is lubricating the bar and chain properly by holding the saw over a piece of bark or a stick and looking for the fine spray of oil coming from the bar. You should also do a chain brake check at this stage. To do this, rev up the saw and push your left wrist into the front handguard to engage the chain brake. The chain should stop immediately. To do a warm start off the ground, engage the chain brake and follow the same setup procedures as before. Except this time, leave the saw on idle, grip the rear handle between your legs, just above the knees, and then pull the starter cord with your right hand until the saw starts. It's a good habit to carry the saw properly wherever you go, because if you slip or someone in front of you slips, you'll want to minimise the chance of anyone falling onto the chain. Always carry the saw backwards, with the spikes or dogs away from your body.
correct chain tension is very important for maintaining safety and good saw performance. It also helps to minimise excessive wear on the chain and bar. Let's have a look at the process for tensioning the chain. During the day while you're cutting you need to look at your chain to make sure that it hasn't come loose. In this instance this chain is just a little bit loose so what we need to do is tension it to the right tension. The first thing we do is we undo the side cover nuts to finger tight. Then we hold the bar up, we turn the tension screw in a clockwise direction until the joining links just touch the bottom of the bar. Then continue to turn the tension screw in a clockwise rotation for about a quarter to half a turn more. Continue to hold the bar up, tighten up the back side cover nut, let the saw the bar go, tighten up the front side cover nut and then give the chain a flick to make sure that it does stop without running on. We can also pick up the chain without too much pressure and get the small of the screwdriver under one tang. That's about the correct tension. When you fit a new chain, you should put a bit of extra oil on it to make sure the joints are well lubricated. You also need to run it in so it can stretch to its proper length. To run in a chain, fit the new chain and tension it normally. Run the chain at half throttle for one to two minutes. Stop the saw, allow the chain to cool and then re-tension it. Start the saw up again and cut for two to three minutes. Stop the saw, let the chain cool and re-tension it again. Now you're ready to use the chain normally. The last thing we need to cover in this section on general principles is the problem of kickback. This problem occurs when the kickback zone of the guide bar comes into contact with an object. Instead of cutting through the object cleanly, the rotating cutters cause the guide bar to flick upwards and backwards in an arc. Because the force is so great, and it happens so quickly, it's quite possible for the operator to lose their grip and suffer serious or even fatal injuries. The best way to avoid kickback is to be conscious of where the nose of the guide bar is at all times, and to always use safe techniques when you're cutting and boring. We'll talk more about these techniques later, but for now, here's a few general tips on how to minimise the chance of kickback. Keep a good grip on the saw while you're cutting, with your right hand on the rear handle and your left hand on the front handle. Always keep your left thumb under the handle don't let it sit on top. Cut at peak revs, making sure that you let the saw reach full revs before you start the cut. Sharpen the chain using the correct cutter angles and depth gauge settings, and keep it sharp throughout the day. Also check the chain tension regularly. Make sure the chain brake is working properly by testing it with the front hand guard at the beginning of each work session. And above all, never use the kickback zone of the guide bar to commence a cut. This also means making sure that the nose doesn't accidentally touch a nearby object while the chain is running, especially when it's hidden from your view 